Hello, oh, welcome to CS320, um, the online edition. Uh, we tried this course for the first time on online last fall due to the circumstances. Um, I was pretty nervous about it at first, but I think it actually worked a lot better than I had hoped. Um, of course, it's more fun to have a class in person and be able to talk uh, directly. But I think logistics-wise, uh, this is a good course to be taking this semester while we're still um, in the midst of a pandemic. Um, this course builds on CS301, which is now renumbered to 220. So if you've taken that course previously, this is an awesome place for you to be. Um, sometimes people have other backgrounds with um, Python or programming in general, and that then the course might also make sense. Um, and I'm happy to discuss that with you if, if you um, are not sure whether this course is the right fit for you. Um, this course is also um, foundational. Oh, sorry. Let me, uh, let me grab my pointer here. It's also foundational to the data science major right here. So um, consider that if you enjoy this kind of course, um, you may want to be a data science major if you are not already. So like I was saying, this course builds on CS220. And uh, in CS220, um, one of our main uh, goals was just to get uh, results that were correct. Um, and in 320, we have a couple more goals besides just simple correctness. Um, one is that we want to have reproducible results. When I run my code and then I give my code to somebody else, are they going to get the same same answers? Our reproducibility is very important to data scientists. Um, second, where I start talking about performance, um, you know, it's not enough to just necessarily get my code to give me the right answer, but can it do it a reasonable amount of time? Especially as we are dealing with bigger and bigger data sets, I don't want my code running for many minutes or hours or even, you know, hopefully not days. Um, in CS220, uh, we learned how to use objects of various types, maybe lists or dictionaries. Um, here we're going to take it to the next level and we're going to learn how to make new types um, of objects from scratch. Uh, and for example, um, a lot of data in the real world can be represented by uh, a graph. Like for example, a social network has these nodes and edges in it. And how can we create new types that deal with that? Um, when we're creating new types, instead of having regular functions like we had in CS220, we're going to be creating our own uh, methods, right? We called lots of methods in 220. We never wrote our own. We're going to be doing that now. Um, we've always given you data sets for 220, and I'm often going to do that for this course as well. Uh, but now we're also going to have cases where we collect our own data sets, either by taking performance measurements, or there's maybe one project where you can choose your own data set um, online. Uh, the, the visualizations are going to be more sophisticated. Instead of simple plots, we're going to sometimes have animations now, geographic maps. And then in the last third of this course, um, we're going to introduce um, simple machine learning, uh, kind of building on the tabular analysis we did in 220. Um, a lot of what we're going to do is, um, in this course at least, is identify a particular column that we want to predict given our knowledge of the other columns. So as you can see, all of this is building here. If you want to have a refresher, uh, I actually, from last fall of, of actually 2019, I have down here at the bottom a bunch of recorded videos. So feel free to go back and watch those um, if you want to refresh on any of that material. So brief introductions here. Um, my name is Tyler Carraza Harder. Um, I'm a longtime Badger myself. I did my um, undergraduate here. I did my PhD here. Um, I probably took a lot of the classes that you are all taking um, these days. A lot of those are still around. Um, you can email me here. I have my email up. Um, uh, you know, it's always good to ask, uh, ask your instructors how they like to be addressed. Um, some prefer more formal, less, some prefer less formal. Um, I'm happy to just be called uh, Tyler. So that's how you should uh, address me in emails or um, in office hours. Um, in, in addition to being at the university for so long, um, I, I have a little bit of industry experience. I worked at Microsoft for almost two years and I, I worked on cloud computing and also uh, a SQL server. Um, I also, when I was in, in grad school, had a bunch of internships, so I'm always happy to talk with people about how to look for internships or how to prep for interviews. Um, I was at a few of the bigger places like Google and, and Facebook. So now that I'm here, in addition to teaching, I, I have some interest in terms of projects. And sometimes students like to get involved in these too, so I just like to kind of say what those are up front. Feel free to uh, you know, schedule time to chat about these if you think that either of them might be a good fit. Um, one of them is I'm interested in, in civic hacking, and, and not hacking in kind of the negative sense that we're trying to break into systems, but hacking in terms of kind of like building tools that help um, help local government. Um, so for example, here I have a project that was done by uh, Zishan and Dingy, uh, previous students um, 
uh, in, in my courses. And uh, what they were doing is they were looking at a mobile library in Madison uh, called the Dream Bus. The Dream Bus has a bunch of folks around and then it drives around different places. You can imagine how that's useful during a pandemic in terms of not wanting to go to a stationary library. And, and in general, if, uh, if you don't have good transportation to get to a regular library. So they analyzed how we could um, optimize that. And there's lots of different projects students um, have done like that. The other thing that I'm interested in is building new um, cloud compute platforms, right? So we write Python code in this course and we run that Python code on our computer, but you might need to have some sort of framework or platform if you wanna run your Python code in the cloud. And so serverless platforms are one kind of, um, of system that you can use for running code in the cloud. And, um, and so I've been building this open Lambda system uh, for running for running that code. And if any of you have taken some uh, of the 500 level CS courses and, and kind of think that might be interesting to you, um, feel free to reach out. So I want to get to know um, at, at least some of you this semester. We have more students enrolled than we ever have before in this course. And uh, and and I guess I kind of want to get to know people on a few levels. One, I mean, I, I love when people just drop by office hours, even just to kind of introduce yourself, what your goals are um, academically, kind of projects you're interesting on, interested in. You know, you don't have to use office hours just for CS320 content. Feel free to drop by and, and chat and introduce yourself. Uh, more broadly, I just want to know who's in the course in terms of what year people are in and, and what their interests are. Um, you know, I have some information like that, but uh, not as much as you might think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everybody to fill out this form here uh, to just help me get to know a little bit more about you and what your background is and what your goals are. Um, there's participation credit in this course, and that will count towards that. Um, the other thing that's going to help with is that uh, I'm going to be placing you in groups that meet on a weekly basis, and there's going to be more information about that, but it'll help um, help give me um, some more information about what kind of group you want to be in, in terms of what time of day uh, you want to meet, whether it's like a morning, afternoon, or midday. Uh, you know, maybe that is somewhat influenced by what time zone you're in. Um, and, and then also how long you want to meet each week. I know some people really find a lot of value out of meeting with other students on a weekly basis. So you could opt for an hour long meeting each week. Um, some people are like to work more individually and so maybe don't want to collaborate as much. And sometimes I group those people together as well. Um, everybody has to be in a group, but if you want to be more an individual, you can be in a group where everybody meets just half an hour a week um, with a mentor. So a little bit more about course logistics after you fill that form. Um, like I was saying, you're gonna be on these teams and I'm gonna be randomly assigning that. I, I know a lot of you have friends in the course, um, but I think one of the advantages of being in college is that you can make um, new friends in your courses. And that's really hard during a pandemic. And so I'm gonna try, even though we're online, to get you to meet some new people. So I'm gonna be randomly assigning you to teams of about four to seven students. Uh, those teams will last the whole semester. The hope is that you can actually have some time to get to know people and, and find ways to collaborate. Um, I'm going to really um, make the rules of the course um, geared towards incentivizing collaboration uh, with your team. So for example, um, projects are going to be broken into individual and team parts, and you're welcome to collaborate with your team in any way on, on the team part. You don't have to, right? I think all the projects are of a size that you could do them individually, and you're welcome to do that but I'm at least making that uh, an option that you can work with your team members on and at least part of the projects. Uh, same thing with quizzes, maybe more some details about this, but um, if you want to, you can actually arrange with your team to take the quizzes together. Um, in contrast, if there are non-team members you know in the course, you aren't generally aren't allowed to um, collaborate with them unless I uh, kind of um, you know have a special exception otherwise. Um, so in addition to those teams of peers that you're going to be on, there are some staff that you're going to interact with throughout the course. Of course, there's the instructor, that's me. Um, you're going to hear me talking during lectures. I'm going to really kind of manage everything logistically this uh, semester. Um, we also have a number of teaching assistants, many of whom are returning and, and have been quite good in the past. And, and so I think you're going, to find, you're going to learn a lot from them as well, in addition to, to me. And, uh, and, uh, and then where I have these peer mentors who have taken the course before and succeeded and, uh, and students love mentors because really these people have kind of learned the material recently and they're very relatable and, and they might be able to explain it in sometimes ways that, uh, you know, I or the TAs who have been doing this stuff for longer, um, you know, we have a different perspective, right? So, so hopefully you utilize all of us this semester and, and kind of get the most out of that 
Now there's a few different kinds of TAs. Um, we, we have one head TA who's really in charge of, of projects. And so she is going to uh, be doing things like running all the auto grading, um, kind of managing, assigning uh, grading work to other TAs. Um, if there are um, kind of errors in project grading, like, you know, say the tester is wrong or for some reason your grades aren't getting synced to Canvas, um, she would be the first one to contact. Um, and, uh, and I recommend you do that rather than contacting me because if you contact me, well, I'll just kind of directly forward that to her anyway. Um, of course, you know, if you feel like you want to contact me for whatever reason, feel free to do that too. Um, each of these teams you're on is also going to have a team TA and that can be kind of your go-to contact as, as well. Um, again, you're welcome to email me with things, but I find that by trying to spread some of the emails around, uh, we can have better response times and, and my inbox doesn't get quite as crazy, right? So you can use your judgment there if you want to contact your TA or me first. Um, or you could always contact your TA first and after a couple days, if, if you kind of aren't getting the answer you're looking for, then you could contact me. Um, you're also going to have a greater TA and that's just going to cycle on a weekly basis. Um, uh, you're going to get feedback from everybody uh, this semester. Each team is going to be assigned a mentor and your team is going to meet weekly at a scheduled time with your mentor. Um, we'll figure out how to do the scheduling of that um, so we have a time that works for, for everybody um, involved. So all of us, the instructors, TAs, and, and mentors are going to be providing office hours and you can attend any of those you prefer. You don't have to just go to your mentor's office hours or your own TA. You know, really come and get help from anybody you like. Um, I, I use Canvas for a few things. I also have um, an external site that I use heavily, perhaps more than uh, many instructors do. Maybe I'll just pop over to this site now so you can see what's here. Um, so this is the website. Uh, you can see that you can get a quick overview of what we have coming. Um, a lot of this information will be on Canvas as well. Uh, I'm going to have readings here, labs. Um, we're going to have ways to uh, submit projects. That's probably the most important thing you need to be doing here. I have a bunch of useful tools. For example, um, we're going to be learning a tool called Git soon. And, uh, and so we're going to have this Git simulator. Um, I may be talking about that more in the near future. Anyway, lots of good stuff on the site. In terms of what's on Canvas, I'm going to use it really just for four things. I'm going to use it for general announcements. Uh, we're going to have um, Canvas quizzes. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all these modules and what you should really do whenever you want to do stuff for the course is you just sign in and you start working your way through the modules and that's going to link to the readings or the videos or whatever you really have to do. And each page is going to have a little button in the top right that says um, Mark is done. And so really I want you to use this as a tool to kind of keep track of where you are um, in the course. You should, at any you know, when you have some free time, you should just be able to pop in. Uh, you know, go to the modules of the course and start work, working your way through. I'm also going to have some simple grade summaries on Canvas. Uh, these are not the only place you're going to see grades. They're also going to be on, on my other site. On the other side, I have detailed written feedback in a lot of cases. Um, Canvas is just going to be kind of a summary, right? So you're going to want to check both places for, for feedback. Um, other communication in the course besides these Canvas announcements is where I have a Piazza, of course. There will be a link not to that from the site. Uh, one rule I have is that uh, if you're pasting project related code, don't paste more than uh, five lines of your code there. Otherwise people might start to copy it and, and then that would be considered cheating of course. So don't post it. And if somebody were to break that rule, don't copy it or look at it, just kind of alert us to it. Um, I'm gonna be posting uh, there uh, some details about our regular office hours um, uh, when you can get help. Um, I have a bunch of forms that you can use, right? We already talked about the who are you form that you should all fill out uh, basically as soon as possible. Um, there's also a feedback form where you can give any sort of feedback about the course you want. Um, you're, you're also welcome to just email me if you want to. Uh, the feedback form does have an option to leave uh, feedback anonymously. Um, hopefully you feel comfortable directly sharing feedback, but if not, that's there for you. Um, and then finally, we have lots of people, right? TAs and mentors helping you this semester. And, you know, I get a lot of feedback uh, through course evaluations at the end, um, which is often usually quite encouraging. Um, but TAs and mentors don't really get that. So there's a thank you form where you can kind of um, say in there if somebody's really given good help or has helped you learn something this semester. And um, I will see that. So it's useful for me to know who's really kind of doing an outstanding job. And, and that's also very encouraging to our TAs and mentors to know that um, that they're kind of helping um, helping their peers learn. 
Um, I have my email here again. And then I have this link here, which is going to show you um, some contact information uh, for me and the TAs and, and some more details about who you should contact in various circumstances. Um, a little bit about course etiquette. Um, uh, office hours are just dropping. Sometimes I get emails saying, hey, can I schedule office hours um, or can I attend office hours? You don't have to do that. You just show up and that's fine. There might be other people there, so you might have to wait a little bit. Um, we're going to be using uh, Blackboard Collaborate for office hours. And the way it works is that we have these breakout rooms. And what we'll usually do, since people are usually coming to get help with their code, is we might put you and your team members um, in a breakout room, and then you can share your screen. Um, so one of the implications is, is that if you come into office hours at the scheduled time, it might be that you know I or the TA are in a breakout room helping somebody. And so it can look like um, it should look like it's empty even though it's not. So if it looks like it's empty and you aren't sure, maybe just type in the chat like, hey, is anybody here? Wait a couple minutes. Um, sometimes people just kind of pop in while I'm in a breakout room and then they leave discouraged before I can even let them know that I'm actually there and that they just have to wait until I'm done helping somebody else. Um, outside of office hours, um, you should always feel free to email me to schedule individual meetings. Um, sometimes that can make sense if you want to have a longer conversation about how well you're doing in the course or how to be successful or maybe if you have other projects you want to talk about um, or, or sometimes you know my office hours just don't work with people's schedule so yeah don't hesitate um, if office hours aren't a good fit to just email me and set up a meeting right meetings are different than office hours we schedule meetings office hours are dropping um, when you are emailing me um, I generally prefer if you email from this like uh, you know something at wist.edu that's how I really keep track of people in the course more so than a student ID. So I'll immediately know who you are and can look up your grades, for example. Um, if you are emailing from a personal email, I guess that's fine. Just trying to put your net ID in the email so I know who you are. Um, try to have subject lines for the email and, and try to keep like one email thread if the topic is the same. Um, I do get a lot of emails and sometimes if I get multiple emails on the same thing from the same person, but they're in separate emails, uh, I get confused and then you know I end up responding twice to the same thing. So do try to keep things on the same thread if possible. Um, we're definitely going to try to have a faster response time than 48 hours, but uh, I think let's view that as like a worst case. I mean, definitely feel to free to ping again if we're taking longer than that. Um, or uh, or let's say like you emailed, um, emailed your TA and you haven't heard back from them within 48 hours, it would be pretty reasonable to just reply on that and CC me. So I, I know too, and I can either nudge them or, or, or maybe I know the answer. Um, you know, Use your judgment about whether to email me or the TA first. Like I said, it definitely helps if you kind of spread out that email load a bit. Um, and if you think the question is of general interest, well, consider using Piazza uh, and, instead of sending an individual um, email. Um, so sometimes people like you know ask a question on Piazza and then it's an email too, and then we end up re uh, responding to it twice. Um, if for whatever reason we're kind of lagging on Piazza, and you want to send an email as well, just link to the Piazza because then we'll save time. We'll we'll be able to um, kind of respond to the Piazza and then say, oh sorry for the delay, um, it's up now. Um, let's talk a little bit about the graded work for the course. There's four components. Uh, by far the most important component is projects. You have seven projects, each of which is worth 8% um, of your grade. Um, in CS220, most projects are these Jupyter Notebook files, and we'll have a couple of those. We're also going to have some Python modules and then just kind of standalone programs.py files that you might run from the terminal. I want you to get experience with different um, with different formats. What I often see is that people, since they're familiar with notebooks, they want to write their code there. And then they keep copying it over to their module or their program every time they run it. Um, I see why it's more, more comfortable to do that when you're first starting. I, I think that you do become more efficient in the long run if you just kind of directly write your code in .py files. And I'll be reminding you of that as the time comes. Um, on each of the projects, there's two parts. The uh, part one, where you are allowed to, you aren't required to, but you're allowed to collaborate with your team, nobody else. Then part two, usually worth about 25% of the grade uh, must be done individually. You're only allowed to get help from 320 staff on that. And, and really, the purpose of having a little bit of individual work on each project is that um, you know I don't want people to be freeloading on on their team, right? So you know to really get good scores in this course, you really have to do some of the work on on your own, even though most of the things you can collaborate with. Uh, we're gonna have a test.py that 
will give you a, some sense of what your grade is likely to be. Um, more so than 220, there's a lot of stuff that requires um, a human to look at it. For example, there's gonna be more plots than in 220. And so uh, more of your grade will depend on a TA evaluation than kind of just like the, what the program tells you. Um, feel free to ask for specific feedback um, beyond what we're grading you on. I think constructive criticism is something that I wanna make a priority in this course. Great, so projects, 56% of your grade total. Quizzes, we have 12 of them, 2% each, that's 24%. Um, the, the pattern I'm gonna do is like, let's say, you know, this week one, we have some lecture. Um, in week two, there's going to be a practice quiz related to this content and the practice quiz is not graded. And um, in the practice quiz, if you have a mentor meeting that week, you might do alongside your mentor and your peers and your team. Uh, the following week after that, week three, we're gonna have a graded quiz uh, on the lecture content. And, um, and the graded quiz is going to be due on the first day of the Monday of, of week three, right? It's going to be about this week one content. And, um, and these things are open book, open notes. You can do this early if you want. Um, you're allowed to take it together at the same time with your team members. Nobody else can help you. Um, mentors cannot help uh, on these. Um, other students in the course not help on these only with your team members and only if you're doing it at the same time. I don't want like one person to do the quiz and then send to their, <clears throat> send to their team members like here is what I put for my answers. What I'm hoping here is that you're all gonna kind of sign on at the same time and maybe have like a Google Hangout or something like that going and you'll talk about it as you're working and kind of share ideas. Um, you're gonna have a final worth 12%. Um, this is gonna be done individually. It's gonna be a short open-ended project on a topic of your choosing. Um, it's going to be due at the originally scheduled exam time, but I'll release it, you know, at least a week or two in advance so you have some time to work on it. Um, I don't want to create time pressure on this, is what I'm saying. Um, there's going to be more details as that gets closer. Uh, finally, participation in this course is a huge part of the grade, and, uh, and so take that seriously. Um, there's going to be class surveys that you need to do, like that first week survey. Um, sometimes I have posted discussions on Canvas. Um, you have to be active in your weekly meetings, you know, show up to those, participate. Um, if you have to miss for some reason, uh, let your mentor know in advance. Uh, most of the weeks this semester we're gonna have mentor meetings, right? That's the most important part of participation. Uh, we have 14 weeks this semester and all the circled weeks are when we have um, mentor meetings, right? So the, the first couple of weeks, I'm just trying to try to get those scheduled, which is why we don't have that there. Um, academic misconduct, make sure you read the syllabus to make sure you know what is okay and, and isn't. Um, sometimes things are allowed that people think are not allowed, right? So one of the reasons to read this is to, um, you know, actually learn some of the ways you're allowed to collaborate that you might have not thought were okay, right? Especially this semester, um, I'm really trying to encourage team collaboration. Um, it turns out there's lots of tools that make it not that hard to catch cheating on programming projects. Um, so for example, in, in fall um, 2019, um, I caught 23 people cheating on projects with this tool called MOAS. Um, two, two students were uh, kind of stealing code from past semesters. Um, seven people were unfortunately cheating on exams. So that's kind of sad actually. And so anyway, I've always put this scary slide now and since then cheating has dropped off a lot. So it's working. So for example, last fall of 2020, um, you know, I only caught four people cheating on projects, which is quite an improvement and, and quite encouraging. Um, so we're gonna do what we can to try to keep the class fair to people who are, um, who are kind of doing the honest thing. Now, I've had so many conversations with people who have, have cheated, and, and what I find is that they, it's not so much that they're trying to game the system. What usually happens is somebody falls behind, they feel desperate, and, and then they kind of do something that they wouldn't normally um, have thought was okay. And so really I'd much rather have these conversations sooner rather than later. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with 320, if you're behind, uh, you know, if you're stressed with your semester in general, let's talk and kind of come up with a plan. Um, sometimes I'll even let people kind of go back and, and kind of redo projects if they fell too far behind as long as there's a plan to kind of catch up by the end of the semester. So just reach out, right? Don't, don't do something unethical. 
Um, I want to help you out if you're kind of doing honest work. Uh, readings, uh, some of the similar texts from 220 and 301. I'm also going to have a, a number of readings on my own. Um, you don't have to do the readings before you watch the lectures. Uh, you can generally do these after you watch the lectures. So I'd like to wrap up here a bit by uh, talking about some tips for success in the course. One is, you know, just show up. And by show up, I mean virtually. Um, I think that it should be very easy to get 100% of participation. Uh, last fall, uh, the average grade on that was like below 80%, right? So I think that, you know, just show up to your meetings, do the online discussions, fill the surveys I ask you, and, and you know, 8% is a lot, right? I realize that being online, showing up is a big part of, um, it's a big effort, right? So I want to incentivize that to just show up. Don't miss quizzes, right? They're multiple choice. Um, sometimes I talk to people, they get behind on lectures and they just don't do the quizzes at all. I mean, they're open book and open internet, so uh, you might as well at least guess, right? Don't leave points on the table. At least just go and, you know, do the quizzes on time. Um, utilize our office hours. Um, one of the things I, I notice, especially teaching online, is that all the students are swapped and therefore have a kind of a greater inclination to procrastinate than usual. So after a project release, what I find is that I might have a whole office hour and nobody comes to talk to me and it's very boring and I might have several days like that. And then, you know, the couple office hours before a, a project deadline, I might have 10 people waiting, right? And I can only talk to each person for a few minutes. So I realize it's hard uh, because everybody's super busy, but if you can try to get a little bit ahead of that wave um, and come to office hours, then you're gonna get a lot more help. Um, a lot of things are kind of not as good online, but one of the things that I think is better is that you can take control of the lecture pacing. Um, in particular, if you're watching a lecture, you can pause me. And uh, I find the students who often get the most out of lectures are writing code as they're watching. And if their code isn't working because they have a bug or whatever, they can hit pause and then, and then do what they need to do and then not pause when they figure that out. Um, we have these labs. Labs aren't graded, but they're designed to give hints for the projects, right? So do the labs before the project. You know, it's really obvious when people don't do the labs because people often come to the projects and they're like, oh, I have no idea how to do this. And like, well, the lab kind of directly told you how to do that. So just do that, right? They're there to help you. Um, and that's trying to make your project so smooth. You'll save time if you do the labs first. Um, this whole group thing, right? Groups are kind of um, mixed success, right? Some people love their groups. Other people are like, hey, nobody is, um, collaborating on my group, nobody wants to work together. And what's kind of funny last semester is when uh, I would have these groups that people weren't that engaged on, I would meet with each of the group members and say, hey, what happened? And sometimes every member would say, nobody ever reaches out to work together, right? And, and so everybody wants to work together, but time nobody is, is kind of initiating that. So, you know, be the person who takes the lead uh, in your group. Um, what I will recommend is, is rather than try to schedule it carefully, um, what I would do is I would say pe to people, hey, this weekend from 4 until 6 p.m., I'm working on the project. Here is a Google Hangout link. If you wanna work on it at the same time, just join, and then you can talk to people who join. Or tell them, hey, I'm, uh, taking, I'm taking the quiz at this time. You can collaborate with your group members on the quizzes. Does anybody wanna take it with me? Um, I, I don't think you really have to get everybody collaborating at the same time. As long as you can get one or two people who are working on things at the same time, it makes all the difference just to have uh, people to bounce ideas off of. Um, tip number six, learn debugging. Um, oftentimes, a lot of people come into office hours and, and they kind of have a, a particular bug and they're trying to solve that bug. But what I'll often notice is that, you know, maybe the stack trace is kind of confusing and they don't necessarily know what line their code is crashing on, for example. Um, if you can't tell what line of code your code is crashing on, well, that's like the first thing you need to learn, right? Because that's trying to help you um, a lot beyond when you're not even in office hours, right? So you learn debugging. Don't just come in to learn your particular problem, but learn these general debugging sk skills. Try to ask your mentors or TAs or me, what would you print in this situation to try to find what the bug is. Every bit of time you spend learning to get better at debugging is going to pay huge dividends in terms of saving you time later. A uh, final tip, right? I mean, this is hard being online. I, I, I understand that as an instructor. And so if you're struggling, reach out. Um, 
at whatever point that makes sense, even if you're way behind, reach out then. But definitely the sooner uh, sooner the better, right? I mean, the sooner you reach out, um, the better chance that we can come up with some sort of plan for you to get back on, on schedule. Okay, so looking forward to another great semester um, and hoping to get to meet at least some of you during office hours. Um, have a good one. And if you have any questions, you know, just drop me an email or if it's general, just post to Piazza.